And Smollett is due back in court in March. Robin. All right, Eva, thank you. The superintendent of the Chicago Police Department, Eddie Johnson, joins us now live. Sir, thank you very much for, for taking the time to be with us here this morning. We know it's been a very emotional, very tense uh, few weeks. And uh, initially, um, all accounts from police, uh, you were treating Jesse Smollett as the victim. When did it turn? from being a possible hate crime to a possible hoax. So uh, let me just put this out there first and foremost, that right now he still has the presumption of innocence, uh, you know, until he has his day in court. So what happened, you know, when the, at the very beginning when he explained and gave his version of events to us, uh, he described it to us and we treated it like a hate crime. You know, one of the things that I think is important to recognize is although the two attackers were masked, he was able to say he could see around their eyes that they were white-skinned, or at least the one guy was a white-skinned person. So that's how we approached it. Uh, the entire time that we investigated mm -hmm. uh, the incident, he was treated like a victim. As you know, we picked up the two individuals after we identified who they were. We were waiting for them at O'Hare Airport when they came back from uh, uh, overseas. Uh, we took them in and started talking to them. Now, we were legally able to hold them for 48 hours. And I refused to let CPD characterize him as a suspect unless we had concrete evidence. The 47th hour that we had those two individuals in custody is when it changed. What, what changed in that, that 47th hour? So we had gathered up a lot of evidence and facts uh, before then. But what changed was that they then became cooperating witnesses. It was there a reason why they became in the 47th hour that they decided to do that? Well, you know, we worked very closely with their lawyer. And their lawyer went in there and talked to him. And whatever she said to him apparently got through to him to just tell the truth about what happened. And that's what they decided to do. Even though that you all were saying early on um, that there was no reason not to believe his story, there were, there were a lot of red flags that a lot of people saw. And you all had questions, even though you weren't, of course, going to be public about that. Right. There were some questions. Uh, but, you know, there's always questions when people are describing incidents to us. You know, so, but we have to to maintain the integrity of the investigation, you know, and that's what we did. You know, we didn't have the facts to support him being involved in it until that 47th hour. You know, and it's important for people to recognize that it's not the Chicago police saying he did something. It's the evidence, the facts, and the witnesses that are saying this. So we, our job is to investigate it and bring the facts and the evidence to the state. So the brothers have stated that? Correct. The, the check that uh, we saw in Eva Pilgrim's report, the $3,500, did the brothers specifically say that was for the attack? They said that he paid them $3,500 uh, with a check to... Uh, but performance. did they say what it was for? Yeah, for, to uh, carry out this incident. Mm -hmm. Your press conference, sir, was so passionate, and it, it seemed quite quite personal, uh, the words that you were talking about, about being um, angry and, and, and offended. And you often referred to the noose, and, and that was a real breaking point for you. Yeah, you know, Robin, I grew up in the, the tail end of the civil rights era, and um, I lived in Cabrini Green Housing Park Project, you know, uh, when I was a kid. And that could easily be characterized as one of the most notorious housing projects in the country. And the symbolism of a noose is very offensive. Uh, the city of Chicago has its issue issues. The Chicago Police Department has its issues with racism and excessive force and all of that. And I, I'm acutely aware of that. Mm -hmm. But we didn't earn this particular incident. And I just refuse to let us have to take that shot if I'm if I have evidence to the contrary. So I, I just want people to understand that's a damaging thing to do to a city and and to a police department. You know, so it's my responsibility to ensure that uh, the record gets set mm -hmm. straight. Yeah, you were upfront about the issues within the, the Chicago Police Department when it comes to race relations and the mistrust from some in the public. So how do you address that going forward? So, you know, something like this can be really damaging. We've made a lot of progress in the last three years since I've been superintendent in terms of race relations. Are we where we want to be? Of course we're not. But we're heading in the right direction. And there's a lot of things that have occurred in the city to let me know that. But I just hope people don't judge other folks that are victims of these types of crimes because this is just one particular incident and that's that's the damaging part of it you damage a city's reputation where we don't need any help with that we really don't but but first and foremost you know there are real victims of uh 
crimes of that nature, hate crimes. And, and I just hope that people don't treat them with skepticism. You know, this is one particular incident, um, and, and it has to stand on its own merits. It's an ongoing investigation? Correct. So where does it stand as of t this morning? So right now, as I said, he still has a presumption of innocence, and he'll get his opportunity in court if he chooses to go that, that, that route. And, and again, you know, I was very acutely aware of the situation in terms of the Chicago Police Department declaring he was a suspect. But I can tell you this, Rob, there's mm -hmm. a lot more evidence that hasn't been presented yet that does not support the version that he gave. There's us. more because you presented quite a bit. I quite mean, legal bit. experts said that's the most that they've seen being presented up front, up front like that. But, but there's still a lot of physical evidence, video evidence, and testimony that just simply doesn't support his version of what happened. Super Tom, Superintendent Johnson, thank you very much again. Uh, no, you're a very busy man. Uh, the investigation is ongoing. It's 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 captured the attention of the nation and beyond, and we appreciate you being here, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Michael? All right, thank you so much, Robin.